All right, how's everyone doing? I am Rich Chalenza. Thanks for tuning into the Rich Chalenza Show. And what I'm going to get into today is something I'm going to call reassess your life during the pandemic. And I'm 51 years old now. And um, so I've been around a while, I guess, to a certain degree, half a century. And I think what I find I found interesting is what I should say is, you know, after having a lot of time off, and even being, you know, in a situation where, you know, we couldn't even go anywhere for a certain amount of time, right? We couldn't do the things we always wanted to do from traveling to going to our favorite restaurants, movie theaters, bars, uh, even meeting out with friends. And it gave me a ton of time to reflect on many different things. And I think for the most part, a lot of people from what I see, you know, were, I get they were scared. They didn't want to get sick. They didn't know what the hell was going on during the pandemic. But I think a lot of people had and still have an opportunity to really reassess their life right now. And also just take time out to kind of think back on what their life was before. Now, I get a lot of people, again, have been furloughed, lost their jobs, may have lost their businesses, gotten sick, loved, lo- you know, lost loved ones. Unbelievable. I would have, you know, if you would have told me this was going to happen, of course, I had no idea. But no matter what, we have to move on to the future. I've talked about this on other previous podcasts. But a lot of things, and I've said this before, you know, I was able to reassess a lot of things regarding who I am through this process. Was I, you know, kind of, busy doing a lot of things I didn't want to do? Was I doing a lot of things for the right or wrong reasons? You know, was I kind of just, you know, trying to be busy to be busy? Was I kind of bullshitting myself a lot? Was I kind of neglecting my health? Was I um, maybe not spending time with others that I should have or reached out to them? Because through this pandemic, I was able to really, you know, build up relationships again, that I didn't have, I think, I, I for myself. And I don't think a lot of people looked at the positive towards, uh, or towards or what we are going through through in the pandemic. I was able to spend a lot more time with my family, um, not my mother, people in Chicago, but I was always somebody who was traveling so much, I really haven't been around the last decade or so. And even though I'm always thinking I'm spending a lot of time with my daughters or with my girlfriend or her kids or whoever, I really wasn't. And it was kind of more or less, I can't say it was, it was kind of like always just going out to eat, going to the movies again, going to the mall, all that. I, it wasn't like the relationships where we just all sit down and have conversations about what's going on, how do we feel, laughing, joking, kind of just calming everything down and learning more about what's going on in their life. Even with my father, I've been able to spend a lot more time with him And it's interesting because, you know, I haven't worked with my father for many, many, many years and me traveling, especially the last 10 years, if not longer. And I haven't worked with him for a long time. You know, I only thought about him in that nature. But now that I've been spending a lot more time with him, I found it quite interesting. You know, you find out how much, maybe it's because of our age, how much we have in common, how much we think the same. And then on other ends, how different we are as well. Again, it wasn't like me, I'm flying into town, run to a steakhouse or run to an Italian restaurant, kind of talk about what's going on and then leave. And then I may see you for a couple of weeks, a month, two months. So again, I've been able to reassess all these different types of things. And that goes for social media. Even me creating my own podcast in YouTube, I finally have had clarity to do it which has been an amazing thing for me because I wanted to do a podcast, actually a radio show for like 11, 12 years. My mom has been begging me. And I did a couple a long time ago. I think it was around 2009. Uh, my buddy was an engineer out of Full Sail originally, and he wanted to do you know, my own radio show with all these different people I know. And we did some interviews and we had a blast. And then I ended up moving and never following up with it again. And that's the one thing I always kind of wanted to really do. And then eventually, you know, they started calling them podcasts. YouTube channel, not so much. My buddy convinced me, another engineer or audio engineer out of Full Sail, 
that's very interesting, convinced me not only to do the YouTube video, but he said, hey, I'll set the podcast up for you. Don't get caught up. You don't need to have somebody with you all the time. Technology has changed. And, you know, I started that a few years ago or a couple of years ago. And in between this, I created a program called Mastering Self-Confidence. And again, I was able to, you know, I was always busy creating. I still am. But back to reassessing, I was a lot of times upset because I can never seem to fit things that I really truly wanted to do because of my scheduling. And now over the last year, I had more than enough time to do that. There were no excuses, which I took total advantage of. I actually thought, you know, you're kind of bullshitting yourself. You want to do your own podcast and your own YouTube channel. You're going to fall apart. You're going to, this is, this is the one you're not going to probably, this is one of the things you're going to probably quit and say F it. And I love it. I think that's, I'm not going to say it's a flaw of mine. Once I start something, it's almost impossible for me to quit until I get the entire experience that I want out of that. That could go for whatever I'm doing, making a film, writing a book, creating a program. I won't stop till the very end. Sometimes is that may not be good because I should cut things a lot sooner. But on the other end, I can assure you, if you want to go on a journey with me, I'll make sure we're going to finish it. You're go- or at least I'm going to make sure we're going to go through with it, regardless if it succeeds or fails. We're going to you know, get things going and we are going to get hopefully to a point where you know, we created something the best to our ability. And uh, so I just thought I would just do a podcast on this. But if you're having problems, you know, in during the pandemic, you're not alone. And I'm telling you, reach out to others. And I think one thing that I was missing, and I think a lot of people are, is a lot of people that I loved having relationships and friendships with, I just wasn't reaching out. And I've been able to do that. Even eating dinner with my friends consistently in Florida or meeting up with them. I was like, you know, this is the best times. Uh, and it wasn't so rushed. And it's not like once every six months. I'm like, oh my God, we're all, we, we're all meeting here. We're having a blast. Isn't this for me what it's all about? You know, it wasn't always about work. It's not always about working out. It's not always about creating. It's about sometimes just sitting back. And I yesterday, one of my friends who got very sick, he ended up having a stroke and he's younger than me. He called me. I was actually having, uh, the other dinner, I was having dinner with my daughter and um, some other people. Uh, well, actually my daughter and my, uh, basically my stepdaughter, I guess to a certain degree. And he called and I was too busy and I couldn't answer the phone. And then he called me back and I forgot to call him, but he called me back and now I was eating. It was kind of like uh, I was having coffee with my girlfriend. We we're having some snacks at a coffee shop and I answered and I said, I'm so sorry. I forgot to call you back, my man. But he reached back out to me. Thank God he did. But I love talking to him. It may not be often. But again, me just thinking that conversation, and I'm gonna when I go to Chicago, I'm gonna definitely try to meet up with him. That meant the world to me. My opinion of you know what life should be, and maybe I don't know if you've assessed this, but what's most important to me now are my relationships. Uh, don't get me wrong, I want to pay my bills and everything, but it's not always possessions. I've been talking a lot about that on my podcast. It's again. If I have friends out there that I haven't talked to in a long time, I am the one to reach out to them. If they don't call me back, they don't. But most of the time they do, or even if it's a text, or even if it's talking to my mother and father every single day. Um, because again, when I was traveling, that didn't happen a lot of times because I'd either have to be on flights or I'm out of the, you know, I'm in a different state or city or country or whatever. Now I don't have those excuses. And I've just been able to reassess and say, my God, the one thing I love, I guess is what I'm saying in this podcast, are my relationships and um, the experiences that I'm having with these people. Again, I don't have to always have them with them specific. But even again, because I've been horrible with the phone, I'm always watching YouTube, for instance, or listening to a podcast, These, especially for many, many years now. I'll text people. I don't talk to them except with the exception of my kids and my girlfriend and obviously my parents and maybe my cousins once in a while. But I was horrible even in the workplace because if you call me, I'll always call you back and I always answer my phone, but I'm not, I wasn't a guy who wanted to talk anymore on the phone. If you saw me, it was wonderful, but I almost, 
I'm not saying I had a fear anymore of talking. It just, I wanted to do something else on my phone or I was too busy doing something else. But now I've, you know, I've been able to schedule calls and I really learned this when I did my podcast. I did, in two months, I did 45 interviews with some of my friends, family members, colleagues, all some of the most interesting people that I know that I wanted to learn more about. And for those two months, at the beginning, it was excruciating setting up these calls, not just because of, you know, just scheduling, but I'm like, oh my God, I got to talk on the phone. When I was doing my other podcast, I would just set it up where we just talked one-on-one. And I realized I I don't have time to always do this. And the audio may have not been as good, but when Zoom kind of came around, I said, let me test it. And I wanted to experiment with it, which I did. But it was amazing to talk to those 45 people again because a lot I haven't seen in 10, 15, 20 years. Sure, I see them on Facebook and stuff. But it's not like actually talking to them on the phone or seeing them. And we even did a 50th birthday party for one of my oldest and closest friends. And he was crying and uh, his family invited me. It was just immediate family and friends. And I was like blown away to see them as well. And actually, I saw a lot of them at my 50th birthday party, which was wonderful last year as well. So not to go on a rant about what I'm going through, but I think if you're somebody out there, just you know, really maybe reassess things because you may have a lot of incredible things that are surrounding you in your life right now. I know there's a lot of bad, but there's probably a lot of good as well. And uh, you know, I think a lot of people too may need your help or may need you to reach out to them or maybe needing a friend or someone to help them. I'm not saying it's your job to do that. But I think a lot of times, no matter who you are, I think sometimes we find ourselves lonely. I remember I used to go to Manhattan and we'd go to meetings and do all this stuff and have friends and everybody, we'd be having a jam. Or even in Chicago, LA, I'd be with all these people. I'd go to all these big events, sometimes with people, sometimes without them by myself. And I'd be in a room with like thousands of people and just feel really alone. Even though I'm having conversation, it's kind of weird life like that. And then at other times when I am alone, I feel alone as well. So I realized I don't, For me, I'm really not alone. I have so many people that I'm surrounded by that love me and I love them. And you're probably, for the most part, I think, probably in that situation too, we just sometimes have blinders on. So I'm going to wrap it up there. You get a chance, uh, check out my YouTube channel, Rich Chalenza. I'm also on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I'm trying to get a lot of followers on my YouTube because I'm getting close to 1,000 for me, which is pretty good. And if you get a chance, check that out and subscribe. All right? Take care, and I wish you nothing but the best.